The coronavirus is causing symptoms in some people in India and panic in many others. If you're living in Chennai, first up, do not panic. So far, there's only one positive case of coronavirus. A 45-year-old man who had returned from muscular Oman has tested positive for the virus on March 7th. He has been quarantined at the Rajiv Gandhi Government General Hospital in Chennai and has been receiving treatment. All the people that he has come in contact with have also been tested and quarantined. So don't believe any rumours that say scores of people have been affected. It's simply not true. Coronavirus infection presents like any other viral respiratory infection, fever, cough, cold, breathlessness. So there is no way you can differentiate coronavirus from any other flu just by symptoms as such. The only way you can differentiate is by testing. And uh, tests are done in government centers. So, But you have to remember coronavirus does not come from air. It comes from another patient who has coronavirus. So you need to be in contact with somebody who has had a travel history or you, need, you should have travels abroad and come back. Visit a center and we will be able to help you out. The mortality rate is very less. It's less than 2%. That means if you have this infection, there's a 98% percent of chance, percent chance of you surviving. In fact, only 75 to 85% patients will be at home. Only few of them need to be admitted to. But then the infectiousness is very, very high. If somebody has an infection, he'll be spreading it to 2 to 3 people. That means 70% of the exposed can develop infection. That's the reason the numbers are becoming so high. It's the older people who have to be very careful, but they're going to be at home. So how are they going to get it? They're going to get it from you. So you will have a mild infection, you will carry it home and you will probably give it to the older people and they may become sick. The youngest children are very immune. We don't know why it's happening. We have not had any mortality in less than 10 age group. So very few people among the young fall sick. Still, that even the small proportion can be a big number considering our population rate. So that's the reason you have to be careful. If you have flu, cough and cold kind of features, stays for a long time, you become breathless, don't sit at home, go to the hospital. Please go to the designated hospitals. That is also important. There is something called immunity. All of us have some kind of immunity to fight against infection. We call it innate immunity. That means it is generally against anything coming inside your body. Maybe a virus, bacteria. So in this particular virus, we don't have any specific immunity against this virus. So generally, you kind of try to throw out anything that comes in. So that's how you fight. As you age, or if you have uncontrolled diabetes, if you have an implant, a transplant, if you have a renal failure, heart failure, these kind of people have less ability to fight anything. So innate immunity is less. That's the reason these people are more susceptible to this kind of an infection. And they succumb to it. This is a big misconception which is going around. Masks do not help the general population. Masks have to be worn if you have the infection. If you have fever, cough and cold, you wear the mask so that you don't give the infection to the people next to you. And if you're taking care of somebody who's got fever, cough and cold, you wear it. Because just to an added protection. Masks are owned by healthcare people. If you're wearing a mask, it gives you a false sense of protection. You might touch your face and eyes after touching others, which will actually, which may even increase the rate of infection. So there is no role for mask in general public. Don't buy and hold it. It is not going to help you. As of now, coronavirus testing can be done only in government hospitals. So Tamil Nadu government has given a list of 43 hospitals in Tamil Nadu and throughout India there are several hospitals. So now the primary nodal center in Chennai is government Rajiv Gandhi General Hospital GH in Central. That's the nodal center. They've given a toll free number. You don't even need to visit because one thing which really helps is home self isolation. Only if you're sick, you need to be in the hospital. Otherwise, you can stay at home. Uh, majority of them get cured on its own. Like as I said, 98% of the people who develop the infection settle on its own. You don't require anything. We use your paracetamol or turmeric milk, whatever. Don't take anything. It settles on its own. Like your regular flu. Like let's say if 100% people get 100 people get it. Around 85 of them will be okay. They'll settle on their own. Some 15 will become sicker requiring some hospital admission, some oxygen or something like that. And probably less than 5 will require ventilator or supportive care. And less than 2 is going to die. So as of now, this is not a major problem. 
make sure you don't touch another person for example if you're traveling somewhere the best thing you can do is maintain a meter distance from your next person because unless somebody touches you or sneezes on on your face or stays next to you and then coughs it doesn't spread to you it doesn't stay in the air for a longer time it settles down on the ground and then it set, it dies off so if you're traveling out make sure you may have a meter away don't touch surfaces again don't touch your face and mouth wash your hands frequently carry a sanitizer with you that should do i have a feeling that everybody thinks that you know people don't die from infections i would say that last probably 2000 3000 years or from the time humanity came up people do die from infections the infrastructure has grown so much that we don't see that many deaths take up simple things like typhoid now the mortality is less if you say 50 years back a lot of people were dying dying from typhoid so in fact all infections somebody dies be it dengue or typhoid even a flu or even via small viral illnesses the proportion varies and as the infection stays for a longer time some of us develop immunity and the proportion of people dying even goes down further and we are so used to it we don't panic now this is a new virus so everybody panics about it and there's so much of information going around people are panicking it's a small proportion but still there will be somebody dying any infection there will be a small proportion who's dying that is something you can't do anything about and this has been there since mankind evolved people keep thinking that chicken eating chicken can be a problem and it it has started because people ate snakes well we don't have any kind of information that these are true this spreads through some mammals and peridomesticated animals and chicken is not a mammal you can easily eat chicken and fish without getting hurt and the problem is when it thinks when things get hyped up people panic when they panic they don't seek health care so for example if i traveled and come back and i have some symptoms if everybody is talking about it then i'll start worrying that i'll be discriminated i won't tell it out what happens i'm going to spread it to four people so unnecessary panic creates more problems um asymptomatic infection rates are very less so now china has released around 70 75000 patients data they don't have much of asymptomatic carriers we still don't know clearly but probably those who spreading infection will definitely have some symptoms the symptoms may be very mild that's the problem might have some sore throat low grade fever it settles down in a day or two by then you will be spreading it and the spread starts a day before your symptoms come up that's why uh, generally you say if you have an exposure you get it by 5 to 6 days that's why government says if you come from abroad in an area where this is endemic stay at home for 2 weeks the clear answer is we don't know so we are just extrapolating based upon whatever we know in the past sars started it started again in february january february and settled down as the summer went in china that summer around april may and similarly influenza and in the northern hemispheres once the summer starts in, it goes down so based upon that people are assuming that it should also go down once the summer comes in but we really can't be sure because we don't know because ebola was in tropics and stayed for a longer period of time so what we can be sh- what i can tell you is if it's going to be a hot environment the virus does not stay in the surfaces for a longer time like for example if somebody spits somewhere if it's going to be a cold wet environment stays it can even stay till 6 7 hours but it's going to be a hot summer the moment it comes down it dries up that's the reason the helplines were started off so please call the helpline rather than if you have a family doctor call them because they'll be able to help you out you'll have a personalized touch otherwise call up the helpline they'll help you and most of the hospitals now screen the patient as soon as they come in they ask them if they have cough cold and if there's a travel history they put them in a separate place identify everything and send them off so that nobody gets infected